In this video, we will see how sandboxes are provisioned and how their access is managed. The process begins with Dora's sandbox request screen. You log in using the information for who is going to execute the data science job. In this case, I will perform the login with my user ID and hold for the authentication to be done. Once authenticated, I can choose the option that fits the work I'm going to perform. In this case, we have three options that were registered by Dora's administrator. In each setup, we can register new or different sandbox options. Here, I will choose the medium sandbox option. Once chosen, just click on Create, and the sandbox instance will be created. How do you ensure that only registered people can access Dora? Where does user information come from and what are their privileges? When we access the Cognito service inside the AWS console, we identify that Dora's user pool already exists. It contains all users created by the registration screen. These users belong to groups and these groups will identify if the users can provision sandboxes, which services will be available for them, and which databases they will have access to. All of that is controlled by Dora's administrator. Incognito and IAM panels. Most companies will already have an access management system. In these cases, it is possible to federate access through Cognito, integrating with the corporation's Active Directory. Through this menu, we have some federation examples. And through SAML and OpenID, it is possible to basically use all other LDAP provider models. In the meantime, we should have received an email with our sandbox access information. I've already opened it and here it is. Accessing this URL, we will be taken to the Jupyter web interface, which will be used to work with Dora. Well, here we are inside our sandbox space. On our left, we have our workspace. I've already created the notebooks directory to group some of my notebooks, but I will use the root directory for our sample to make it easier to understand. Let's suppose we have an external file not present on any database and we wanna use data crossing. Just go to this menu, select the file, and upload it. Done. The file is now available on our workspace. Now I will show how to create a new notebook. I will select the door option in notebooks and a notebook will be created. Let's call it demo-2701. Okay, we have a notebook. As an example of Dora's operation, I will run a query based on the JSON file we just uploaded. So I will set the SQL that we are using Dora functions, and I will use a query that I had previously defined. In this query, I am searching for some information such as user information, birth date, and then I define that I want to read it from the, that JSON file on my workspace. Once I run this command, it returns to me the information in a data set. That is the output from my query using only SQL. Just a simple example to show how information consumption works when it comes to our workspace querying files that we left available in it. 
At the end of our work, there is no need for our sandbox. Therefore, after disconnected for a while, and with the processing stopped, the EC2 is stopped by DOORS monitor, avoiding unnecessary expense. If we provide a new sandbox with the same user, all the files will be there. The knowledge remains. Well, guys, that's all for this video. In the next one, we'll be able to see data engineering working within Dora. See you next time.